let's take a look at a problem involving what's called a ballistic pendulum. And so we are going to shoot a bullet into this block. Maybe it's a block of wood. And it's going to hit and stick. And then it will swing up afterwards. So it might look something like this. There goes the bullet. Hits and sticks. They move together and reach some maximum height. And so if we measure this final height, we should be able to figure out what the speed of the bullet was before it hit. And so we have the mass of the bullet is given as 0.01 kilograms. And the mass of the pendulum, the block of wood before the bullet hit, is 2 kilograms. And they rise to a height of 0.12 meters. You would typically measure that to the center of the block, but the change in height for the center of mass of the block, 0.12 meters. And so we want to work our way backwards to find out how fast the bullet was going before it hits. And so first we want to use conservation of energy to figure out the speed of the bullet and the pendulum just after the collision, but before they've started to move. So we assume the collision occurred instantaneously. And so conservation of energy would say that the energy at the highest point here, the final energy, would enter equal the kinetic energy just after the collision. And so the initial equals the final, or if you like, the kinetic energy at the bottom equals the potential at the top. We would set the potential energy to zero here. And so we find out we get one half the total mass times their combined velocity squared is mgh, the potential at the top. The mass is cancel. And we find out that the bullet and pendulum were going 1.53 meters per second just after the collision. Now, why don't we do this and go all the way back and figure out how fast the bullet's going by saying its kinetic energy equals the potential energy here. Uh, the collision is an inelastic collision. Kinetic energy is not conserved, so you can't do that. And so now that we know the velocity of the bullet and pendulum immediately after the collision, we can use momentum, which is conserved in an inelastic collision, to solve for the velocity of the bullet. So what kind of collision was this? It was a inelastic. And so momentum is conserved, or use my advice, always do momentum first. Energy, uh, kinetic energy not conserved. It is being dissipated as heat uh, by deforming the block and the bullet. And so we say the initial momentum equals the final. We want to be careful here now. Initial means the bullet before it collides, and final now is just after the collision. That's what we used in the energy conservation step as our initial energy. It is now the final momentum. And so the momentum of the bullet before the collision is the momentum of the bullet and the pendulum just after the collision. And we already figured out how fast the bullet and pendulum are going. We're working our way backwards. And so solving for the velocity of the bullet, we get 307.5 meters per second. A uh, typical sort of question they might ask is how much energy was dissipated in the collision? And so the initial kinetic energy was all in the bullets, 1 half mv squared. The final kinetic energy was all in the bullet and pendulum. And this is immediately after the collision, before it's swung up. But you could figure out mgh too if you want. And so the change in kinetic energy, almost all of it, we lost 470.4 joules. And so that means 470.4 were dissipated. And so how wrong would you be if you had assumed that energy was conserved in the collision? A, way wrong. B, way, way wrong. C, way, way, way wrong. And we know the answer is D, way to the fourth wrong. Energy was almost all dissipated in this collision. So always do momentum first.